Welcome back. So in this short video, I want to lay the foundation for thinking about how we bring models to de and data together, which is going to be a topic we're going to spend an, uh, really most of the rest of the semester on. Uh, and at the heart of that idea of bringing models and data together is this idea of the likelihood. Uh, and at the heart of the likelihood is the idea of probability and the idea of that probability is the way that we link models and data together. And that we do that through you know, a whole host of possible probability distributions. So here's one way to, that this is important and how, how probability tells us about the connection between models and data. So imagine that I had, uh, and this is a, a simple simplified case, imagine I only had two hypotheses. Hypothesis one, x was zero, but with some amount of uncertainty. Hypothesis two, x was three, but and with a different amount of uncertainty. Uh, now I observe a data point at 1.5, exactly halfway in between the two. Question would be, which hypothesis is more likely to have generated this data? Now, uh, most folks, uh, if I was doing this live, I would, I would pull everyone to get their, their opinion, but consistently most folks tend to agree that hypothesis two is more likely to have generated this data because the probability density at, of that point is higher. So this is closer, you know, relative to the standard deviation of this distribution, it's, it's closer to the center. It's a, a higher probability of this having to being generated uh, than for hypothesis one. And not only can I say that hypothesis two was more likely, but I can actually strictly say how much more likely. So this this has a probability density about one point, uh, sorry, about 0.16. This is about 0 0.06, which gives me, you know, by their ratio, that hypothesis two is about 2.7 times more likely than hypothesis one. Now, 2.7 is not one in 20. It's not you know an alpha of 0.05 percent. So it's not statistically significantly different. Uh, you would need a lot more evidence to you know refute one of these hypotheses, but it does say. Uh, not by a lot, but but that we do think the hypothesis two is more likely. This idea that we can use probability densities to say something that, about the likelihood of hypotheses, and, and particularly that, that the the data that, that yeah, this idea brings us to the, the concept of likelihood. And so the concept of likelihood is the one that says that the prob uh, first let's define what a likelihood is. So what a likelihood is, is the probability of observing a given data point x conditional on a model with some parameter value theta. So in this previous figure, you know, I had uh, a model, you know, in this case, theta is this particular choice of mean and standard deviation. The other theta is a particular choice of mean and standard deviation. And I can use the probability density to say, what's the probability of this data given that hypothesis. It's what we were visually doing here. So, so what we were doing there visually mathematically conforms to this idea of the likelihood. We can, if we specify a probability distribution on a model or a forecast, we can actually calculate the probability of observing the data predicted by the model conditional on the model structure and the choice of parameters. Now, that likelihood is going to be central to all of classical statistics, which are based on the idea of maximum likelihood, and also all of Bayesian statistics. We're going to be using likelihoods the rest of the semester. So it's a pretty core concept. Uh, in classical statistics, we also we, we invoke or frequentist statistics. Yeah, a lot, most all classic estimators that we deal with, you know, ANOVAs, regressions, even fitting means or generalized uh, linear models, blah, 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 you know, all of them come from this idea of the likelihood principle, which says that a parameter value is more likely than another if it is the one for which the data were more probable. So that's just putting into words exactly, again, what we saw in this graph. You know, um, we think this hypothesis is more likely than that, that one because the data is more probable. In reality, in most cases, we aren't dealing with just two discrete hypotheses. If you're calibrating a model, for example, you might be con considering a whole continuum of possible parameter values. 
So that leads us to this idea of a likelihood profile. So here on the x-axis, I'm saying, uh, I'm gonna evaluate a whole slew of possible values that mu, the mean could take on. And then from each of those calculate the likelihood of observing that data. And here for reasons that, that are uh, numerical efficiency and, and analytical simplicity, uh, very often these likelihoods are expressed in terms of a negative log of the likelihood. So instead of maximizing likelihood, we're gonna minimize the negative of that log likelihood. Um, and the log means that these differences on the y-axis here are, are, are log differences, or order of magnitude differences. Um, and from this, we can say that there is a most likely value. Uh, and in fact, mathematically, it will turn out that the most likely value is one and a half. So if you have, uh, if you only observe one data point at one and a half and you want to guess what the mean is, guess one and a half. It's probably not one and a half, but it's more likely to be one and a half than any other data and any other value. Uh, and you can not just say that it's more likely, but you can say the relative odds of, of that versus other choices. Uh, more formally, we can do a little bit of calculus and algebra to kind of show what that maximum is. So we can take that likelihood. We can write it down in terms of the actual equation for over that probability density. Uh, we can take the negative log of that, the negative, because uh, it, ter it turns out in many cases uh, with probability distributions, logs tend to actually make the math easier because they tend to make these exponents, which are common in a lot of distributions, go away. Uh, there's Often when we have multiple data points, we have products of distributions that turn into sums. It makes the math easier. And it turns out that because the logarithm is a monotonic function, uh, doing that transformation doesn't change where the minimum and maximum are. So it's perfectly fine for us to take the log here. Uh, once we take the log, we want to find the maximum. So we take the derivative, uh, and then we set the derivative equal to 0. And then it's just algebra. We solve. Uh, for the parameter we're trying to estimate. In this case, seeing that if we only have one data point, x, that indeed the most likely estimate of mu is that setting it at that value of x. More generally, uh, maximum likelihood involves a fairly predictable algorithm that begins by writing down the likelihood. So if you have some process model that describes how you think the process works, you connect that to a data model that describes the prob this probabilistic relationship between what the model process model predicts and the, and the observations you see. Uh, that kind of uh, is very often, say, a you know, very common thing is to say choosing a normal distribution to describe residuals, but it doesn't have to be a normal model. Uh, we take the logs, we take the derivatives with respect to each parameter, set those equal and solve for the parameter. We're not going to do much of that in this course, but you, we, you know, if you've had 375 with me, you got a, an introduction to this. If you do 509 with me, uh, we'll do a lot more of diving into maximum likelihood and the derivation of a lot of uh, classical and Bayesian estimators. Uh, thanks. That wraps this up, and we'll dive next week into into introducing the idea of, of Bayes theorem and Bayesian statistics. Thanks.